So I remember leaving university with very, very little Excel knowledge. And I started a career at PwC being an external auditor. And I knew nothing basically about Excel. And it's taken over 10 years to get as good as I have and really know the full potential of how you analyze data using Excel. So I thought today I would talk about 10 things that I wish I knew about Excel when I started. If you do like this kind of content, please do subscribe to my channel. But with that being said, let's jump straight into it. Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. Welcome back to another one of my videos. As I said, I'm going to go over 10 things that I wish I knew when I started using Excel. Now these are going to be kind of like useful tips and just little nuances. I did make a sort of beginner type course, a five part series talking about how you can use Excel using like shortcuts to formatting to harder formulas. I also in the link below, there's a link to this buy me a coffee page where you ha there's a downloadable link that you can use to uh, and it shows you uh, all these simple formulas or like loads of different formulas that you would need to use when using Excel. So if you do want to check that out, click on the link below in the description. But that being said, let's go over the 10 things that I wish I knew when I started using Excel. Now I'm unfortunately using a Mac, so some of the different viewpoints and windows might look slightly different to what you see on a PC. However, they should be quite transferable. So the first thing is going to be about pivot tables. Now everyone's seen a pivot table or hopefully you've seen a pivot table. When you drag in additional functions into this pivot table, so if I bring in the year, you can see that the formatting happens in a sort of list format. And I've brought in another one like quarters. You can see that this pivot table is all listing it down, which isn't the best way to review a pivot table. Now, the way I used to do this was by using right clicks and then changing the viewpoint of the pivot table by, uh, you know, using a lot of right clicks and going to pivot table options and layout, et cetera, et cetera, to change the view of the pivot table. The quicker way of doing this, which I could have saved a hell of a lot of time if I knew, was actually just to go to pivot table design. And then you can go to pivot table layout and you can do things like tabular view, like this, you can go to turn off grand totals, turn off subtotals, and you see you have a different viewed pivot table. It's just quicker than using right clicks. It's very simple. Some of these things are very simple, but they're just quick tips that should hopefully be quite helpful for you. Okay, so the second thing I'm gonna show you is also to do with pivot tables. And this is gonna to be to add in columns to your pivot table that aren't existing within the original set of data. So you can see here, I have a set of data that the pivot table is based on. Now, if you didn't have price, you just had revenue in units, you could obviously source that in the original set of data. But the thing that I've started to do more often is you can press, you can press shift control plus, and it brings up this insert calculated field. And then you can add in different um, formulas that aren't in the original subset. So you can take say revenue and divide it by the units, like like this or you could you know divide that again by a thousand if you wanted to sh represent it as a different sort of set of numbers and you can add in a formula and press OK and then it brings it in as a separate column which is a very useful thing to know when you're using Excel. The third point is also to do with pivot tables. So it's starting to look a bit pivot table heavy at the moment. But say for instance that you had different sets of products, so I'll bring the products in, and you can see here you have desk, table, chair. Another thing you can do is subcategorize these. So you can call it something original. If I press on this group and then just say group selection, you see it's created chair in a subcategory product. And now you can just call it something original like um, something original like desk and table and then press enter and you can see it's taken a subsection. Now you can take out the original product version here and now you have a subgroup which wasn't in the original subset of the data. So that's going to be my third point and the, probably the last one to do with pivot tables. So the fourth point is going to be about filling gaps. So you often get a set of data like this and you can see it's subcategoried January and then there's a gap and then there's February and there's a gap and there's March and in 2019 there's a, a gap between that and 2020. Now if you want to fill these gaps, um, obviously copy and pasting data is just not really going to work. What you want to do is do the formula equals up and then select 2019. Then you want to copy the 2019 formula for so equals B4, so equals the cell above. Select the entire range, so press Control A, and you'll select the entire range, then press F5. And that brings up this special go to box. You can click special and then select all the blanks. This is also useful for a number of different factors here, which is probably worth checking out. But say you want to select blanks, you press OK, it selects the blanked areas. And because you're copying the formula, then when you press Control uh, V or paste, you can see here how it's pasted the same 
same formula, so equals up. And now you have a full set of repeated data. Now, if you want to put filters on this, I would suggest you copying and then pasting this as values. But there you have a full set of data now with no blank information. So the fifth thing I wish I knew was how to use a lot of shortcuts. Now, when you get started, you generally use a mouse and you're clicking around, clicking individual cells and dragging boxes using cells. And I remember uh, I worked with a guy who was in uh, data modeling or had that was his sort of speciality. And he told me that when they started, you basically never want to have to touch your mouse. You just want to move around the page. And as, if you just start trying to get into the routine of using just the keys to try and get around, you're going to be able to do things a lot quicker. But obviously it takes a bit of adjusting and I'll go over a few shortcuts here that'll help you move around the page. So control and then arrows is a key one because control and arrow will take you to different edges of um, the box. It'll jump to certain corners when you press control and arrow. If you press control A, it'll select a box. Control C will copy the box. Control V will paste the box. If you do control, uh, sh control Alt V, it brings up a paste special box, see? And then you can like paste formulas or you can paste values. So if you have a load of formulas within that box, you can paste the values and it'll just copy it as, as a number format. You can do things like transpose doing this. And the way you go down is you obviously press the tab button to select down the page and then you can press the transpose, you press okay. So that brings up that box, you can press control and then space and it's going to it's going to select a column you can press control shift plus to increase a column you can press control minus to decrease a column you can press shift space and that's going to highlight a row like that you can press control z to undo so you can see as you start to learn more controls it allows you to manipulate the data a lot quicker and um, and it just gets your work done a lot faster so I wish I knew all the control I, I wish I knew all the shortcuts again uh, in the downloadable uh, Excel sheet that I have in the description below I have put a load of different shortcuts and the ones I generally use 95% of the time so check that out if you want to check that out so the sixth thing I wish I started doing when I used Excel was to create a reference sheet now this is quite a simple concept but it's something that I see, don't see a lot of people following when I look at other people's Excel sheets. And what do I mean by reference sheet? Well, it's just everything that you're using uh, to draw data from a central point. So say you have a lot of workable tabs, you're trying to pull like currencies from a different tab, or you're trying to pull different dates from a different tab, you know, working days within certain months, things like that, just have all of it within a reference page. So for instance, say I didn't have quarterly data, what I would do is say this was another reference sheet, I could create a load of uh, months like this and do Q1, Q1, Q1. Okay, so there you have your quarters. Now if I go back to the data, say for instance, I didn't have quarters here, like I don't, I can create a column, do quarters, and then you can do a V lookup between Jan to the quarters here, copy it down. Now that's quite a simple reference. But say, for instance, you had a lot of other references, it would still be best practice to keep them all within this tab. So if I'm ever drawing information that I use very, very frequently to draw it from this. And why do I do that? Well, if you were in this data tab, a lot of people's tendency is to say, if you, you have a VLOOKUP you want to do quickly, you might just put the data there, just a random set of data. But it might be that the reference is used in other areas. And if you don't always reference from a set table and different references are for the same data is pulling from different areas, then if you ever have to update the worksheets each month, then you're going to be uh, referencing data and the data from one table might change and it might not match another table then you're just going to have a lot of the same sort of information in different parts of the workbook so it's keep everything in one set space have like a reference table and then you know where the information is and why you're drawing that information into uh, another workbook or another worksheet. So number seven is going to be about recording macros. Now, why do I record macros? It's usually not to do anything too sophisticated. It's going to be to repeat very simple uh, uh, settings that you do very, very frequently. So a lot of the time, it's things like formatting. So for instance, you see here it doesn't have like commas and it doesn't have the set formatting. What I'm gonna do is put a minus number here just for the sake of it and you can see how it shows as like a, a line and not a bracket. Now something that I frequently end up doing is setting uh, how I want the numbers to look on my worksheet and it's just 
it doesn't feel like a lot of effort and it just takes like 10 20 seconds each time you do it but when you do it you know 50 times a day every day for like 10 years then it's uh it you realize it's useful to just record in a set uh, macro that's going to make it easier so what you can do is you can uh, create this developer tab within your panel you might have to uh, do this by changing your preferences so if you go to uh, preferences and you can create this developer tab it's going to be something like that within the pc view as well and the developer tab has this button called record macro and what you do is you simply press this button you can create the names so you can go personal mac macro workbook you can put in here what your uh, command is going to be so it could be option command okay so let's do uh, l instead so this is now recording so what i can do is press command one and that's going to bring up this format cells and custom and you see i would usually create a custom format such as hash dot, uh, comma hash hash zero and then let's just put no decimal places and you see in brackets here say for instance i want it to be red i could do uh, square brackets type in the color close brackets and then if you press uh, semicolon and then press a dash if it's a zero number it'll come up as a dash then you can press ok and then you might want to center it like this and then what I do is, so I've recorded that macro, how I want it to be done. Then I can press stop recording, okay? And you can see I've created this uh, formatting. Now this might be the standard formatting I want across all workbooks. Now I've recorded it in, what I simply have to do is I can press command options and L and it'll create the same formula across all workbooks on your PC. So you never have, you never have to uh, redo that exercise. So for instance if I put a zero in here you can see how the formatting is a dash. So number eight is going to be some simple tips to do with graphs. So here's a set of data, pretty standard how you enter a graph, but usually people enter graphs by just selecting one set of axes for the x-axis like January. But if you select above and you select the 2019 and 2020 and you can see the subsection is the months, what it will do is actually categorize it within your grid. So what do I mean by that? Well let's select this set of data and let's just select the revenue and then I press insert and then I have recommended charts like this press enter and you can see here what it's done is created a subsection for 2019 and 2020 now because I don't feel like that's good enough for just one um, tip what I'm going to do is also show you just another small tip to make your graphs look slightly nicer if I change this um, elements so I go on to change chart type to line you can see this line is a jagged line one thing that just makes your graphs look nicer is if you click on this line and go to the paint box and then you go to the bottom which says smooth line it's going to give you a smooth line like that doesn't seem like much but I think it looks a lot nicer <laughs> and not many people do it so there you are there's a tip so number nine another quite simple thing that uh, for ages I didn't realize you could do. But say you had a circular reference. So for this instance, price is being calculated based on H and G. But say for instance that this figure here was actually trying to calculate something from this divided by this. It's going to create a circular reference. Now it's not often, but sometimes a worksheet can sort of get corrupted by these circular references and you just can't find where the circular reference is and say you're on sheet three. Well, you can click on this formulas bar up here and go to check errors, circular reference, and then you can click on where the circular reference is and it'll take you directly to that circular reference. So number 10, the last thing I'm gonna show you is actually pivot tables. I said this was, I wasn't gonna do any more pivot tables. But then I thought of this one and I thought I'm going to have to include this. And what I'm going to show you is how you can use the pivot table like other regular cells within Excel. And what do I mean by this? Well, when you try and create a formula with pivot tables, it usually creates this get pivot table data table reference, which seems OK. But when you try and drag down formulas, it just retrieves the same figure. It doesn't act as a regular cell within Excel. And the way I change this is you go click on the pivot table, you click on pivot table, anal uh, pivot table analyze, and you can click this options you see this drop down box and you untick generate get pivot table data and you can then use the data like you would other cells within excel and it's not going to create the same
same sort of problem, like this. And there we are, there's the 10 things I wish I knew when I started using Excel. Now I tried not to repeat uh, a lot of things that I've made in other Excel videos so that you have more added information. But if you do want more information about how to use Excel, check out my other videos. And if you want to see more kind of videos like this, then please do subscribe to my channel. Like this video, thanks for watching, have a good week, bye bye.